What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? What's up, model car mechanics? Have you ever been to a hobby shop and you saw a model car, but you really wanted to know what was inside the box before you bought it? Today, I'm gonna open up and show you what's inside the Dealer's Choice Super Parts Pack by Model King. And if you stick to the end of this video, I'll show you a really cool video that I'm sure you will enjoy. So let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. Now today we're taking a little bit of a departure in our 1970s model kit tour with this uh, really interesting Model King's Dealer's Choice Super Parts Pack. Now I know this uh, image actually reminds me of like the Brady Bunch opening scene. So what's inside this thing? What is this? Now according to the end of the box we actually have the Open Road Camper which was another great 70s add-on kit and the Racer's Wedge. Now recently AMT has released the Racer's Wedge as we can see in this image here. However, this model kit from the Model King came out by RC2 in 2004. Here we have the open camper on the side of the box and you can see a lot of great little details in here. Tables and fridges and places to store stuff as well as the sleeping quarters, really cool stuff. And on the other side of the box we have the racer's wedge which includes things like the jacks, the oil cans and gas tanks, little jacks, toolboxes, and all the different tools you need in order to race your racing wedge vehicle. So let's remove the lid of this box and then we can take a look at the parts before we get into a more detailed view of them. Right away we have the instruction sheet which is nice and then we've got the parts here for the wedge. There's a whole lot of chrome in here, it's really cool. Even got wheels for the trailer, so that's awesome. Then we've got our camper details down below, and then our clear parts, nice to put in bubble pack, and then there's some more chrome in the bottom. And what else do we have? Well, we've got two tires and a metal axle and our tail lamps. Now the best place we can start our tour of our model kit is of course with the instructions and here we get the open road camper which looks really great and the racer's wedge. Both of these can be dropped into different pickup trucks or mounted on the uh, pickup truck chassis. Again really cool things. Uh, of course we have our important parts before you begin building. Look over the instructions carefully and on and on. And down here we have the wheels and tires going together. So here we have our camper shown in five steps and the first of course is to assemble our kitchen. Now look at this great kitchen sink you get in here with the faucet on the top, the three elements for our stove, the burner up top, and then uh, there's the oven down below and then we've got all the little silverware drawers and drawers for dishes and other cool things. Really awesome looking. Step two shows the rest of the camper going together. Now this of course is just the one side of the camper. So there we've got our completed kitchen and sink which we'll be gluing in here. Right beside our fridge there's the floor pan and the springs and of course a bunch of little uh, levers and hooks for the front of the inside of this trailer and of course the sleeping area and all the different details. Again really cool stuff. There's some more of those cabinets. There's a little couch or side chair. Then the back with some clear windows. Again, really awesome. And here is the opposite wall of our camper. There's the ladder to get up into the sleeping quarters. A nice table for in the center of the floor. There's our other bench seat, as well as some more of the cabinets. And I do believe this may be a TV or something, which again is a really cool camper accessory. All of this will go together and look really, really nice once it's all done. So before we continue with the explanation on the instructions, I just wanted to know how many people plan to go camping this summer and where do you want to go? Let us know in the descriptions down below. And has anybody actually owned one of these types of campers back in the 70s or even up to now? Let us know. So carrying on, we have these nice reflectors up in the back as well as side marker lamps. These could even be brake lights as far as I know. There is the little porch thing that folds down with the little supports on, well, they call it a patio here, actually. And the little brackets to hold it all in place. Here we have the outer door, and if you look down here, it shows how to make it work so that the door is open. And then we have our little snap steps, and I do believe that's a handle in there. 
Again, really cool looking trailer. Step five shows the roof of our camper being glued into place with a bunch of these different skylights and hatches that you can put on. Here we have a couple of brackets for the rear view mirrors and then a little trailer hitch which will glue up underneath. The instructions for our racer's wedge are really straightforward. There's a two-piece floor jack, two-piece gas tank, two-piece fire extinguisher, all our tools that goes into that center tray. And then we've got our sides with opening doors as well to display more tools inside. And then a couple of little back walls and a center brake wall in there and mud flaps and a bunch of other cool things. Very straightforward, easy to build. Gee, Trevor, I don't know about you, but this unboxing video is making me hungry. Me too. How would you like some bulgogi chicken? What is that? Bulgogi chicken is a Korean dish that I found on a YouTube channel called Chop Chop Recipe. Will it take long? Danny, I can cook this faster than you can scrape down a model kit's seam lines. You just need some simple ingredients and cooking utensils. And you too can make a great meal like this. Chop Chop Recipes shows you step by step how to cook fast, easy Asian food. Awesome! Now let's eat that bulgogi chicken and get back to our unboxing video. Here we have the detailed components of the inside of our camper. There's very many cool things like these different bench seats and cabinets as well as refrigerators, I guess this is, and uh, many other cool things. Parts of the kitchen, the ladder that takes you up and all the rest. Now I don't know if these parts look small to you or not, but here is a 125th scale Henry Ford from ICM, of course out of the Ukraine, and you can see just how big he is in comparison to this cabinet. So there is quite a lot of room in this trailer once you get it all together, but we can take a look at the nice detail on here. Again you can see some pretty interesting wood grain. This uh, is getting a bit loose there. Of course, this is another one of the great model kits that is on loan for this video from my good friend James. So just say hi everyone to James. <laughs> anyway, thank him for letting us borrow this. Again, great wood grain texture on here as well as a cross-hatched cushion type texture. The latter is really cool. And then again, we've got all those silverware drawers and drawers for dishes. On the back side, there are some mold marks we'll have to deal with, as well as numbers and some really weird uh, injection molding kind of, I don't know what you call that, little bits that pop up in the mold marks or something. Anyway, there again is that nice seat. And we've got a great door here. On the back of the door again is wood grain paneling, however there are mold marks in the middle of it. So you have to use some sort of putty and kind of smear it to make it look like that wood grain. Again, very nicely done. I'm not quite sure the vintage of this camper kit. I'm also not really an expert in campers, but what I can tell you is that I would get this if I could, and hopefully round two will re-release this in some form. The next components on our camper are of course the floor bed. Nice texture on here, which we'll take a look at in a minute. There's the rear wheels, the back door. We've got a bed here with, again, a nice blanket texture molded in. Then we've got our rear panel. This would be the porch. And then this little filler piece in here that uh, is sitting at this weird angle. So let's just take a look at our floor pan. Again, you can see that nice carpeted texture. It's almost like a reptile skin in there. Underneath, there's some mold marks you can deal with with your sandpaper. There's our little wheels. Amazing that these two little wheels can actually hold all the weight of this camper. <laughs> and then they've got a little area for that big cabinet, as well as a step back here. So that's pretty cool. Looking at the back, again, excellent texture. I do believe it's going this way. So there's the step plate with the actual like checkerboard on there. Or diamond plate, I guess it's diamond plate. Again, look at that nice cross hatching there on that blanket for the bed. Really awesome. You could uh, really paint that up nicely with a dry brushing technique. Then we've got the patio. Now, there are the mold marks on there, so they'll have to be dealt with. But, you know, you could always glue a piece of felt or something over the top of that, or like a rubber matting. There are some mold marks on the back of the inside of that door. But again, overall, I would say these parts are really cool for what you get. 
Here we have the sides of the camper, and there's some really excellent detail here in these little louvered vents for air conditioning unit, as well as this box here off the side for our power. I'm not really sure if that's quite correct. You guys, if you had one of these campers, let me know in the comments down below what door and what panel is what. Here we have that side door. So just to compare this with our Henry Ford, you can see that uh, he would have to actually crouch down a bit to get into that door. But I do believe Henry Ford is quite a tall man. So here's a regular average height guy, I do believe. And like you can see here, he'd only have to crouch a little bit to get in that doorway. But it gives you a great idea of just the size of this thing. There's our hitch for towing, as well as the springs and one of the side mirrors that came off. And one of the areas for, I do believe this would be the axle, or that door that drops down in the back. So I'm just going to move this out of the way and we can take a look at our camper sides. Maybe one will suffice, I don't know. So look at that nice texturing on there. And if we turn it over, you can see right around the window is another texture. And up here is a texture, but it's smooth here and here. I do believe that that will all be covered with those big tall cabinets and the kitchen sink and all the rest. Here's the other side, and much the same again. Texture around the windows, wood grain I can see. I don't know if you can see that too well, but that's the wood grain texture. So you can paint this up in a lot of really cool colors. Really a classic for that era, and really amazing. Now the springs on here, again, have the leaf, leaf <laughs> molded into it, and looks excellent. Here we have the back wall for our trailer and the upper sleeping area with the windows in place. There's some more of the little drawers and the back end or back door, as well as this cabinet. And here's our roof. If we turn the roof over, you can see the dome lights inside, as well as the ribs and more of that wood grain texturing. And turning this over, there is some texture back here and a lot of little sink marks. Here we have the chrome components for the camper. Now I'm holding it here because there's some pegs underneath. But anyway, there's the rear wheels. I like these wheel covers, actually. This would be kind of neat on a uh, 1960s, 50s era custom car, if there was four of them. There's the top of our stove. This is a gas stove, as I can see now. There's the fridge door. Here's the air conditioning unit. And there's some of those sunroofs, as well as our sink and a whole bunch of other really neat goodies that are on here. Now, see what I mean? Those look like the old Dodge Lancer type wheels or something. Again, really cool. There's those long pegs I'm talking about. On the back, a bit of mold marks. There's a nice little caster, a wheel and caster there. Again, really cool stuff on here. There's the front of our oven with all the little dials and everything and the oven door. Awesome stuff. I really like this. Hmm, maybe I should ask James if I can buy this camper off him and build it. I don't know. We'll see. Or hopefully round two will come up with one. Here's our glass for the kit, and it is very flat and rather boring, but it will do the job correctly. These are, of course, the bigger glasses for the back doors and little windows for the camper area. Now here we have the Goodyear Polyglass GT tires, the metal axle, and the two red tail lamps. I'm not going to open up the tires and the axle, just to keep that together for James. And we have seen these model kit tires in many kits before. So, good tread on here. The letters are really stick out quite a bit, which I don't know if is really true to scale or not. But overall, they will support your trailer and look quite nice once it's done. Here we have all the components that make up our racer's wedge. Again, really cool. There's the center section with the nice rails going down for our wedge. And there's the sides with those doors that will hook into place. The floors for in the center and at the back. And again, some ramps here just that will go in these holes. And here we have a nice little jack stand. So let's bring these up into the camera. Very awesome detail in here. You can see the nice metal plate work in there. We do have some mold marks in the center, which is kind of a shame. As you can see, this is a nice wedge-shaped plug that will drop into the back of the trailer. I guess this is a trailer. <laughs> some little side panel doors here on the wedge body sides. 
nice area for putting in those doors. You get the toolbox, as well as these little mud flap ramp things. Actually, I'm not sure what those are. There's side marker lights molded into place. Excellent detail work. Uh, mold marks along the back. You might want to f sandpaper up there and there just to straighten them up. The two-piece toolbox looks really nice. And then we've got our back panels. These go up in behind the wheels. And they have a nice little rubbery type texture onto them. There's our hinges for our doors, just like the real thing. And a trailer pin. Then on the back we've got some mold marks that we'll have to get rid of. But overall, all these components are really nice and should get you a really excellent looking racer's wedge. And like I said, round two has just re-released this with the actual 1972 Chevy, which is just like original. So again, very awesome. Here we have the chrome components for our racer's wedge. And you can see the two-piece fuel tanks, which look really great. There's our two-piece fire extinguisher. There's our floor jack with the jack handle the side mirrors, and a whole bunch of other goodies, like this tire iron and hacksaw, and even a wrench. So, bringing this up to the camera, you can see the excellent detail work on there. I do believe there's a name on that wrench, which looks excellent. Turning it over, you'll have to remove the chrome along these edges when you glue everything together. Overall, really looks good. A couple of mold marks in some places, but, you know, maybe uh, the way you put it together, no one will know. I don't know. But overall, I think this is a really awesome addition to that great racer's wedge. I hope you found this video great for your next model car purchase. And don't forget to click the join button down below to show your support for our channel. Now, as promised, this video right here will show you a really cool technique that you can apply to your model cars. And if you want to see what model cars that you can buy from me today, check out this link right down here. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that video and we'll see you on the next one.